Good morning, everyone. My name's Suzanne. I'm one of the chaplains here at Crowhurst Christian Healing Centre. And welcome to our Thursday morning healing service. It's very funny doing, um, leading a healing service when there's nobody here in the chapel apart from Pippa on the piano and Esther and John on the audiovisual desk. So thank you. So I'm not on my own. And it's lovely to have your company online. So welcome to all of you. If I said to you, what day is it today? I wonder if you'd know. You probably know that it's Thursday, and you probably know that it's the 22nd of October. But do you know what else it is? Well, I discovered that today is National Nut Day. And that's not a joke. It's, um, and the, the, the website that I was looking at said, um, and it's not nuts in terms of um, how we might feel about ourselves or each other. It's nuts as in nuts and seeds, nuts. And when I saw that, it made me immediately think about Julian of Norwich and one of her meditations which focuses on a hazelnut. Now, I hadn't got a hazelnut at home, and I don't suppose you can see this because it's quite small, but this is a conker. It's still a nut, it's still little, and it's still brown. It's a bit dried up and shriveled to what it was when I first picked it up, and it was beautifully shiny and kind of that lovely brown burnished color. But it's still a nut. So we're gonna focus using um, Julian of Norwich's meditations on a, on a hazelnut for our focus on God. But a bit of background on Julian first, because actually there's quite a lot of similarity between her situation and our situation today. And you might already know this about her, but she lived in the 1300s. And she lived her life in such a way that we can immediately identify with that today. Because at this time, the world was in the grip of a pandemic. It was actually the Black Death. And it was a very, very savage pandemic, highly contagious. And estimates are that 40 to 60% of the population died. Different infection to COVID, and in the late 1300s, at the age of 30, Julian was sick. And it wasn't clear from what I was reading whether she had contracted the, um, the, the pandemic infection or not. But she was certainly very sick and she lay dying. And in herself, in the awareness that she still had at that time, she thought herself to have died. But she didn't die. She had visions, she saw light. Um, she had a sense of revelation from God. And she had 16 revelations, all rooted around the death of Jesus. And it enabled her to look deeper into the heart of God's love. And then she um, recovered. But that experience was to shape her life. And as a result, she went into a life of strict isolation. I think we can identify with that. We have had six months or thereabouts of isolation at one level or another. But she chose to go into isolation as an anchoress, which is a word derived from the Greek that means to withdraw. She withdrew to a cell that was attached to a church and to a life dedicated to prayer. And she had in her little room that was attached to the church two windows. One looked out onto the church so that she could see mass, and the other looked out onto the world. And it was a ceremony to become an anchoress performed by a bishop that effectively buried her in that cell. She wasn't completely out of touch with the world, though, because people stopped by her worldly window, so to speak, and um, sought a word from her and sought her prayers. So she may have had solitude and isolation, but she was not, her world was not silent. But she did know what it was to live through a pandemic 
and to live a life of isolation. And all the social, financial and economic upheaval that it led to. So we'll come back to Julian's nut in a minute. But first let us worship as we, well you can sing, you can sing your hearts out at home. O oh God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. These words, of course, come from Psalm 139. When I walk or lie down, you are before me, ever the maker and keeper of my days. Thank you, Pippa. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for the words of this hymn taken from that uh, much loved psalm. My Lord, as we come before you now, we give you permission to search us and know us. to know our thoughts because you Lord are the maker and keeper of our days and Lord that gives us security in these uncertain days and Lord those lines from verse 2 with love everlasting you besiege me Father, I ask that you would besiege everyone who is watching this worship online 
you would besiege them with your love, that they would be in absolutely no doubt of your love for them. Because, Lord, to know your love for ourselves is healing indeed. So I pray, Lord, that this encounter with you, this healing service, would be an encounter of love. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. I'm going to read the words that Julian wrote, centred around her nut, that um, we're just going to then focus on for our time together. Julian says this. This is in one of her visions. I saw that he is to us ev everything that is good and comfortable for us. He is our clothing which for love enwraps us, holds us, and all encloses us because of his tender love, so that he may never leave us. And so in this showing I saw that he is to us everything that is good, as I understood it. Also in this revelation he showed a little thing, the size of a hazelnut, in the palm of my hand, and it was as round as a ball. I looked at it with the eye of my understanding and thought, what can this be? And it was generally answered thus, it is all that is made. I marvelled how it could continue, because it seemed to me it could suddenly have sunk into nothingness because of its littleness. And as I was answered in my understanding, it continues and always shall because God loves it. And in this little thing, I saw three characteristics. The first is, God made it. The second is, God loves it. And the third is that God keeps it. And then she goes on to say, truly, the maker, the lover, and the keeper. So what does that have to say to us? What does Julian's hazelnut have to say to us? Those three attributes apply to us. He made us, he loves us, and he cares for us or he keeps us. So let's just look at one scripture that says something about God's love for us about God creating us. And I'm going to read from Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. So the first of the meditations, God made us. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I love those verses, fearfully and wonderfully made, knitted together, created 
And as a nurse, I have often reflected on, in a sense, the tensions between the strength of the body and its frailty. When you look at the body and how it functions, it is so amazingly made, so wonderfully engineered. Sometimes I'm left thinking, why does it go wrong at all? And yet then I think, it is so complicated, so complex. It's systems. One relates to another that relates to another. Why doesn't it go wrong more often? The functions that we do without even conscious thought. We breathe through the night. Our heart continues to beat through the night without any effort on our part. The ability of the body to, to self-heal, to self-generate, to repair. Our bodies are a miracle. And that's only a tiny aspect of creation. But God made us. And yes, we get sick, we get infections, we get diseases, we get injuries. But our bodies are a miracle. So let's just pause a moment and pray for the sick, the injured, those that have COVID, those that suffer chronic ill health. Let's pray. Father, we do praise you because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you saw each one of us when we were in that secret place, when we were a little mass of cells. And even then, you knew who we would be, you knew our identity, and you, know that the, you knew the purpose that you would call us to in life. But Lord, sometimes there are things that happen to us, diseases and infections and illnesses that are beyond our body's ability to repair for themselves. And we need help. Thank you, Lord, that we have the NHS that we do. That is so amazing. So responsive to critically sick, critically injured people that can do miracles that would have been unthought of in Julian's time. And before we pray for the sick, Lord, we take a moment to pray for all who work in the NHS, for the battle that they are in at the moment as they care for those with COVID. And Father, we pray for each individual nurse, doctor, technician, therapist, carers, the people behind the scenes, the people who manage the systems, who are never seen by the patients and yet are critical to the work of the hospital. Pray for them all, Lord. We pray for their emotional, physical, spiritual well-being at this time when the potential is for them to get so battered. We pray you'd protect their health and their strength and their stamina. And Lord, for all who are sick, those who are listening who are sick themselves or are carrying people on their hearts that are sick, Lord, thank you that we have doctors and we have treatments and medicines, but Lord, we can also cry to you for your healing touch. So, Lord, we do pray for your healing for all who need it today in the way that they need it. And we ask this, Lord, in your name. Amen. You can reflect a little bit on... Um, 
letting the Son of God enfold us. The healing that we need, the wholeness that we need that comes from Jesus. So let the Son of God enfold you with his spirit and his love. Thank you.
Thank you, Pippa. So we move on to the second of Julian's meditations. First was God made us. The second, God loves us. And I'm just going to read a few verses from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords, his love endures forever. To him alone who does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Why don't you say the response with me? Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. And then the last two or three verses of the psalm. To the one who remembered us in our lowest state, his love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, because his love endures forever. God's love endures forever, if you hadn't got the message. And if we had read through that psalm very carefully and noting each of the verses, would have seen that in his love he created, he rescues, he led, he guided, he protected, he gave gifts, he remembers us, he frees us, and he feeds us. These are all coming out of his love. So let's just pause and pray for those who are in need of protection, who need rescuing, who need the freedom that Jesus can bring through his love. Lord, thank you that in your love, not only did you create us, you lead us and guide us, you give us gifts, we're in your mind, you are mindful of us, you feed us. But Lord, this psalm also reminds us that you protect us, you free us and you rescue us. And Lord, for all who are listening today who need some kind of protection, who need security, who need rescuing, who need to be set free, who need to be released, Lord, we bring them to you and ask, Lord, that you would bring about transformation that would set lives free, that would enable people to live without fear in security. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And then the final part of Julian's meditation. God cares for it. Or in the word that um, is in her writing, God keeps it. And that reminded me of the words of the blessing to be found in Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So I had a quick look at what that word keep means. It means watch, preserve, guard. It means a watchman, an overseer. And so we have that picture of God as a watchman of our lives, the overseer of our lives, not just now and again, 
all the time. Because he loves us. There is much, much more that we could say and look at from Julian of Norwich's um, vision about the hazelnut and so much else. But we're going to leave it there for now. This vision of the, of the nut and those three things. God made us. God loves us. God cares for us. God keeps us. So hold on to those three things as we enjoy the final song of our time together, which is Marilyn Baker's May the blessing of the Lord our God rest upon you day by day. May he keep and guide you every step of the way. And may you know his peace deep within your heart. And may his love control all you do and say. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us today. Amen.